What every young prophet should be aware of, especially when you catch the fire at fresh. A lot of the young people or the people coming up in this generation are so gullible that sometimes they do not take time to learn history. And there is a saying that those who read history learn not to repeat mistakes or repeat negative patterns. So let's quickly go into the things you should be aware of and be very careful in how you handle them. Number one, beware of the old prophets. In 1 Kings chapter 13 verses 18, the Bible speaks about a young prophet who was sent by God to deliver a message to a certain king in Israel. But he ended up being deceived by an old prophet. What you need to know is that anything God mostly want to do new, especially through the life of a young prophet or something new God want to do, most of the times it becomes a threat to the older people. So some of the fathers who are not that sensitive and allow the flesh to take over them begin to try to become like a stumbling block. So this other old prophet told the young prophet that he was also a prophet and that an angel appeared to him and told him to do the thing he has been forbidden by God to do. I am saying this because many young prophets have been shot by older prophets. And that is because of envy and jealousy. But you see, this is not to disrespect the older prophets. You need to honor them, but you must learn to stick to what God told you when you met him or when he met you. Your encounter with God is what really matters to withstand this type of temptations. I stick to whatever God tells me, irrespective of anything any other person is saying. Beware of the old prophets. Some of them have issues anytime God want to do a new thing. Number two, beware of the Adamson. When I talk about the Adamson, I am talking about the sin of the sight, the sin of the earring, and the sin of self-ego. Remember, Adam wanted to be like God when he was already made in the image of God. God has made you a prophet or God has called you into the office of the prophet. Be careful with your eye. Be careful with your ear. Be careful with what you see, what you hear. Because your desire to always try to see as a prophet can make you start looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. Very important. Number three, beware of the abuse of authority. The reason being that there are several of us prophets who get to a point when grace increases and when we speak a word, it comes to pass. We mostly think that we have arrived. So when we don't allow love to dominate us, we begin to start cursing people. You hear many prophets, instead of being a tool of blessing, they try to curse people at the least provocation. But remember, when John and the other disciples wanted to call down fire like Elijah, Jesus told them that in our generation or our dispensation, we are called to call down love. Love is the key. 
that brings a reconciliation between the fathers and the sons. So your authority is a love-based authority and not a judgmental mindset. Just imagine if that was how the older generation did, some of you today would not have survived it. So if Jesus preached love, let love lead. As Prophet T.B. Joshua said, Number four, beware of Jezebel, the slayer of prophets. There is a certain demonic anointing that slays prophets, which is the Jezebel kind of spirit. In case you are a prophet and you think you are untouchable, you have not yet met Jezebel. Who is Jezebel? Jezebel represents idolatry. When we talk about idolatry, we are talking about the practice of worshipping idols. Jezebel leads many to become idol worshippers or to sit on the table of idol worshippers. There are many prophets, especially the young ones, because of how gullible they are and how desperate they want to prophesy they end up falling into the wrong hands and some along the line get corrupt along the line get defiled others too begin to stain their garments with idolatry jezebel also represents immorality and all kinds of sexual misconduct. Many prophets have fallen victims to this scenario. But I want to ask you, what kind of prophet do you want to be? Don't forget that the greatest prophet who ever lived among the prophets in his dispensations by name Elijah ran for his life as soon as he heard the negative news from Jezebel. Jezebel is dangerous. There are many that will come into your ministry purposely to offer you free sex in order to destroy your anointing. But you must stand against it because your journey is far. And if you don't take care, it will be cut short many destinies has been crippled by Jezebel. Number five, beware of Mammon, the God of money. There are many as soon as God began to bless, they think that that is all God has for them. So for them seeing money, they forget the mandate. Money is not the answer to all things in the spirit. That could be the natural, as the Bible says, but not in the spirit. Which means that our assignment is very spiritual. And the focus must be to always hear God and to obey what the Lord is saying. But unfortunately, many young people, as soon as money touches their hand, they focus on how to spend the money, broadcast the money, take pictures of the money, live large, and always forget of the assignment. And this is because a lot of them are following the old prophets. Because most of the old prophets have not taught as well. They go on social media all they do is to show the cars they've bought, the houses they've bought. We didn't say God calls to make you feel ashamed or God appoints you to disappoint you. That is not the nature of our God. But you need to understand that the focus is not making money. The focus is making impact. 
So if God blesses you with any material kind of blessing, let the focus be how to advance your prophetic ministry and not to showcase your wealth. Nobody is interested. That cannot save me. Neither can it save anybody. If the God of Mammo enter your heart, you begin to charge people for consultation. You don't care if men are dying. All you care about is to make your money. After all, you are a big boy. People kill to watch you. But remember, this work you are doing, the day will come you will face the judgment of God and you will know exactly how to answer. When mama takes over you, unless you see money, you can't minister. You become more or less like a performer. Watch out. Number six, beware of your inner cycles. Be careful with the people you associate with and the people you share your secrets with. I am saying this with a deep pain, not just telling you a theoretical things, but I am sharing this based on experience. I know I am not that grown, but this is one experience I can't forget. People in your inner cycle are the people that are mostly tempted to become your hindrance and your stumbling block. Be careful the people you associate with because that will either determine how far you can go with your prophetic ministry. I've come to a place and I've made up my mind that anybody who is not prophetic cannot be my friend. And for that reason, I am seeing my life now moving from glory to glory. But it used not to be so because I surrounded myself with people who were only interested in using my gift but were not prophetic enough to advance the gifts or to advance what God is doing in my life. If you want to delay in your assignment, work with the wrong people. They will frustrate you. They will say all kinds of things about you. Yet when they appear before you, they look like angels. Beware of your inner cycle. Choose men who are prophetic. People, when you say that, say the Lord, they wouldn't question you because they understand and knows the value of what God says and they trust the word God puts in your mouth. Number seven, beware of negative patterns. As a prophet, don't think you are exempted historical patterns. So read history of how great prophet rose and fell because you will need it to survive in these evil days. A lot of us don't read histories. If you read about William Brown, you will understand how deep he was and how his end was. And this will help you to draw vital lessons to empower your journey. Also, if you read about all these great men, there were certain repetitions that was not good. And as a prophet coming out, you need these things to better your journey. There are certain things that has occurred in your family and it keeps on repeating. You need to do a thorough research in order not to repeat those mistakes. In my family, there was a lot of polygamous and people mostly marry and have children also through wedlock. When I was growing up, I saw myself caught up in this same web, but I was sensitive enough to realize it earlier and I escaped for my life. You are not different seeing other prophets falling through sexual scandals. If you don't work strongly on negative patterns in order not to repeat them, you will become a victim of that same thing. Number eight, 
beware of the demon of pride and competition you see when you begin to walk in the prophetic and especially you become so forensic and people start noticing you majority of the times if you are not sensitive to the love of God and if you are not kingdom minded you begin to compete with other prophets oh this prophet cannot do well than me see I can even prophesy far better than him oh I am more forensic I know how to do it better the Bible says they that compare themselves among themselves are not wise wisdom is profitable don't be cheated because of pride there are two kinds of pride which you need to be aware of pride number one has to do with the pride of life. A lot of us, because we've been able to attain certain degrees, certain stature in society, or our influence on social media, we think that simply means that we have attained certain heights in God's realm. Footballers are popular. Social media jokers are popular. There are many comedians that are popular on social media. Are they also carrying the anointing? No. Any man can be popular depending on what you choose to do. So popularity and gaining social acceptance does not make you or does not mean you are walking right as a prophet. Most of the time, sit down to analyze your life. Have you gone wayward or you are still walking in the faith? Number two kind of pride is what we call spiritual pride. Getting to a point in your life as a prophet where you feel you no longer need to pursue the voice. You need to seek the voice. Many have gotten to a place they feel they are now major prophets. Go oh, major, major. And say yes sir. The most sharpest prophet. It be like yes sir. The prophet who knows all and sees all says yes sir by the reason of all these name collections their desire to keep pursuing god start dying listen to me spiritual pride is getting to that place when you think you don't need to enter new dimensions and you are certain with what you have and say now i am okay with what i have paul the apostle said the more i know him the more I want to know him. Paul said, I want to know him more. This was a man who tasted all kinds of encounters, yet he still strived on a daily basis to still know him. My dear prophet, remember this. You are not the first to be called a prophet. You are not the first to be ordained as a prophet. Men came after you, and because some of them couldn't work well, they fell. So if you are hearing this message, let it be wisdom to you because it will deliver you one day from the hands of your enemies and foolishness. Thank you. This is Prophet Gilbert Atanga. If you are blessed by this message, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Bye.